is going on everybody welcome back to another video today we're going to be taking a look at sentry mode so sentry mode came out a few months ago a few updates ago but in tesla's uh, i've noticed a kind of a pattern where you get a new feature with an update but it's not that great and then as more updates come out even if tesla doesn't put anything in the release notes the feature gets better and better since sentry mode has been out for a few updates i figure we should check it out now and see if it's maybe a little more sensitive when it first came out the alarm wasn't really going off very often even with loud noises and different things so we'll look at that um, but let's try to set it off okay so the bluetooth on my phone is off right now so i'm using my key to lock and unlock the car. So the car is locked right now, and if it detects my motion from either the side repeater cameras or the front camera in the windshield, the sentry mode icon is gonna show up, meaning it's recording, and hopefully anyone uh, creepy looking in your car sees that and it makes them think twice before touching your car. All right, so let's get the car locked. All right, so since the car is locked, the sentry mode icon should pop up any second because I am near the car, I'm moving this repeater right here on the side of the car can see me. And there it is. So I've left this back window rolled down to simulate a common problem in California. I think it's maybe like legal, you're allowed to smash windows there or something because pretty much every Tesla um, has this back window here smashed by somebody at some point. Um, so I don't know why that's happening so much there, that's pretty ridiculous, um, but we're gonna simulate that happening um, and I'm going to see if I can set off the system. So first of all, I'm just gonna reach in and clap. All right, so that's pretty loud. I don't know uh, how much, oh, okay, that just made some kind of beep. I don't know what that means. Um, but the security system didn't go off, um, but that's pretty loud and I'm not sure why that wouldn't set it off. That's pretty cool. So I did actually didn't expect that to work, um, but I just banged the back seat here uh, and then I took my key card out to stop that. But you got the music on the inside and you got the car alarm on the outside. That was pretty sweet. So I wonder if it has some kind of weight sensing. So let me lock the car again. And instead of banging the back seat, I'm just going to kind of push on it. Okay, so the sentry mode icon is on but just kind of pushing on the seat isn't making it go off. All right, so that was pretty good. Um, so when people smash these windows, the, the reason they're doing that is because the seat, the seat unlatches right here, and you can hit this, and you can pull the seat down. And then you can look in the trunk, and you can see if anything valuable is in there. Obviously, I just pulled the seat down. Sentry mode is on. I can see it on the screen, and it doesn't really care about that. So that's pretty weird. So if there's something valuable in this screen, then what they're going to do is they're going to go into the car and... So this beeps every once in a while. I don't know, maybe it's saving a clip or something. So once that back seat is down, what they're going to do is they're going to go into the car, and they're going to want to open the trunk so that they can get in there. So let's see if opening the trunk will set the alarm off. So sentry mode is active right now, and I'm going to open the trunk. I had to lock the car first, and then I opened the trunk from my app while the car was locked. So I can just lift the trunk. It's actually open right now. And sentry mode didn't do anything. Um, in previous versions, it would the alarm would go off uh, if the trunk opened, even if you opened it from your app. So I don't know if that was a bug or intentional. You know, it's kind of hard to say because the car is locked. The alarm system's on. Personally, I think if the trunk opens for any reason while sentry mode is on, I'd rather just have the alarm go off just in case, but I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. All right, so I'm gonna put this seat back up. It's still down from before. Let's see if that triggers anything. So a big loud clunk didn't do anything. I wanna see if uh, we can repeat what we got before. I want to get my key ready though. I didn't expect it to work last time.
Okay. So that time it didn't work. So not very consistent. So I'm wondering if we move the car at all, if we can get the alarm to go off. Okay, so you can shake the car all you want. What about reaching in and opening the door from the inside? Oh, okay, cool. That was pretty good. I guess if you leave a window rolled down on accident enough so someone can reach your hand in, the alarm will go off. That's good to know. You'll notice on the test when I opened the door, the music inside of the car didn't actually start going off. And I've heard that's a safety feature, so if someone's in the car and the alarm goes off, you won't damage their hearing. Um, you do have, of course, the horn is still going off to alert people around, um, but the music isn't gonna go off if it thinks someone's in the car. When the alarm goes off, you also do get a notification on your phone. So if you're not just playing around, you can run out to your car and, and check on it and see if somebody's messing with it or if it was just a, a mistake. We can try door handles. A lot of people are curious about these. Sentry mode is on and we're not getting anything. We can use the door handle, car doesn't mind. So we've opened the frunk. We have the auto open going on and sentry mode still doesn't mind. I wonder if we close it, maybe that click. Nope, sentry mode doesn't care about that either. So let's take a quick look at the sentry mode settings. If you look in the top here, this is uh, on a newer update. This wasn't here originally with sentry mode, but you can easily enable sentry mode at any time by clicking that button. So now that it's red, sentry mode is on. And now that it's black, sentry mode is off. If we go into the safety and security settings, we scroll down here, we can see sentry mode. I have it auto enabled every time I park. Besides the times I park at home, it will not turn on because I park in the garage. And then any favorite places I have, uh, it won't turn on there either. But if I get to, let's say, a favorite place and I actually do want it to turn on, I can just click that after I go into park and then it will be on at that location. So if you don't want sentry mode to turn on whenever the car is put in park, you can just turn that off. So the settings are pretty simple. So welcome to my little studio area here. This is where I do all my editing and everything. I'm not a professional, so the desk might be a little messy, the lighting might not be perfect, the camera angles might be a little different, but this is where I'm gonna do some of my filming to tell you about some other parts of the car. So I'm gonna show you how to set up sentry mode in your Tesla. Uh, so if you haven't done it yet, you can use a USB flash drive, but they don't always have the longest kind of life and writing all that data all the time can kill the flash drives pretty quickly. So I picked up this SSD. I'll put the link in the description. I haven't been using it that long, but it's rated for endurance and it had really good reviews on Amazon. Um, so I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, you'll also need this um, SATA to USB connector. That's also linked down below. Um, so let's get this hooked to our computer and I will show you how to format this so that you can use it for the Tesla cam. So that'll be for your uh, driving, your dash cam footage, and also for sentry mode footage. Yes, I am just filming my screen. It's a little easier for me to edit uh, this way. Uh, so hopefully it's not too annoying for you. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I plugged in the SSD using the USB to SATA connector, and then this automatically popped up. I've already, of course, set mine up um, for Tesla cam, uh, but I'll show you what to do if it's new. So the first thing, whenever you connect a new drive, uh, if you're not seeing it, it won't always pop up over here on the left. Uh, this is my new one, it's called New Volume E. Just go here and type Disk Manager. And all your disks will pop up. And if it's not, again, if it's not showing up here, you can go in here and then uh, it'll show up somewhere. Just look for the correct size and it'll say that It'll look kind of like this. It'll have a black bar and it'll say unallocated, except it'll be the full thing. So this is mine right here. Um, and as you can see, mine is already FAT32. But when you're in this menu, you can right click it and you can say new simple volume. Now I'm not doing that for this, but that's what you would do if the drive is not detected and you have a black bar up here instead of a blue one. But since mine is already done, we need to go to another program. So Tesla Cam needs a FAT32 format, and Windows can only format up to 32 gigabytes of FAT32. So this drive is 120 gigabytes. Even if you have a, a flash drive, you know, that's 64 gigabytes, you have to do FAT32. So I will link to this program in the description. It's called GUI Format. Um, you know, always be careful downloading random things from YouTube descriptions, but I've been using this one and it's been fine. So after you've downloaded the program, you just double click it. You say yes, you wanna use it. Your computer's making sure you wanna open that. You select the drive that you want, so mine was E. And you can change the name, but I don't really care, so I just leave it like that. Hit start. 
okay? If you run into this error, it's because you have the uh, Explorer open, so just close all folders that you have open. Click OK. Try it again, hit Start, and it should run no problem. So now it's been formatted. So if I go back into my computer and go to Drive E, you can see nothing's here because I just formatted it. And then what you want to do, this, this is what exactly what yours will look like. You can uh, right click and click Properties just to double check but it should say right here, file system FAT32. That means you're good to go. Uh, and let's just, while we're in there, double check. We still have our full size, 120 gigabytes or whatever it says. And then we need a new folder. You name it Tesla Cam with a capital T and a capital C. It is case sensitive and that's all you have to do. Now you can plug it into your car and you should get the uh, dash cam symbol popping up in the top right um, of your display, that means it's working and it's ready to record in sentry mode and record in Tesla cam, uh, dash cam mode while you're driving. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is actually a bug with sentry mode. A lot of clips when there's no movement have this kind of weird uh, anomaly that you can see. I'm just going to show you a few clips here. So this first clip uh, I was taking actually for this video and I thought it would just be, you know, a little funny thing to, to show of me looking into the camera and it's completely unusable. You can't see my face, you can't see anything. And normally when there's movement, it's really good. And then in some other clips, you'll just see when the car is sitting there and nothing's happening, the clips look all blocky and messed up, uh, usually near the bottom, but sometimes the whole clip. And then right when the car starts moving, everything's fine. Um, whenever there's movement, the clips all come out fine. Um, so that's really good for the dash cam footage in case there's ever an accident or anything. Um, but for sentry mode, it's a little bit worrying. And, and some people tie this into the speed of your storage or anything, but I have tried tons of different flash drives. I'm now on this SSD. I'm still seeing the same thing. So there's, there's no correlation with the type of storage you're about to use. It's just sentry mode has this bug. And so hopefully the software can be updated soon uh, to fix that. Um, so that's going to be it for this one. Here is, um, I'll give you the full volume for um, the interior when the alarm goes off, the music. So it's about to get super loud. This is your warning. Turn it down if you need to. Um, but thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, please hit like and get subscribed. And I will see you in the next video.